But uh, one one contextual thing I'd like to um, bring up that Harold talked about that era of the '60s, which was an era of deception, obviously with the uh, John oh, F. Kennedy. Massive, massive. You know, there's lots that, of, that's why we're that's why we're totally justified. Yeah, that's in that's what, yeah, yeah, because it's in that era of time. It's you know we're very very suspect of nearly everything that happened during that period. But um, the one thing I would say is that at that time, America was at its greatest as far as being able to use labor and its its knowledge. Like, it's definitely not as powerful a nation now as it was then. It had, like, this real desire to be the best in the world, and the, and the people were really compelled um, to work hard. And, you know, they were, they were fit, they were young, they were smart. But really, the America we see today is nothing really um, nowhere near as, as talented. And I've often thought that the reason they never went back to the moon um, was because they just didn't have the tenacity they had back in the 60s. And um, also, something I think needs to be brought up is that I know for a fact that by the time the sixth um, module landed on the moon, no one gave a shit anymore. Everybody was pretty much over it. They'd, they'd run their course. The reason they stopped using it um, as a propaganda or exercise was there were much better ways to make money than... To, you know, than stripping um, the budget out of the NASA because obviously a lot of big corporations made a lot of money out of going to the moon. There'd be no doubt about that. Um, but they seem to just lose interest in it because the, the, the media had lost interest in it. What, yeah, do, what do you correct. think of that? They, 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 they once, in fact, if you recall, on Apollo 12, uh, even though they were supposed to bring a colour TV camera on that mission, it got burned out, of course. I mean, even though they were supposed to bring in some colour TV, by that time, when people were actually calling up the networks and complaining that reruns of I Love Lucy were cancelled. Yeah, that's that's right. So well, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you, and uh, good to see you, you know, agree on that point that they were most people were over it, and I think that's the most likely yeah. reason they wrapped it up. Now, the Apollo Whether 13, it was a stage the Apollo 13 flight did manage to get some interest back in the Moon program, though, but it, that after a while they became bored again. Yeah, but either way, the Apollo 13 mission definitely resulted in a way of how they could get out of, you know, continue to fake uh, moon flights. Okay, we've completed the objective. Now let's get out of it by, you know, making. Yeah, that's faking. you know, that's subjective, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's an interesting aside. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what's next for you, Jarrah? Are you like, have you got any projects? Are you going to make a, a full-scale documentary? Anything interesting you're planning? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm just um, finishing up a, a documentary about the Apollo One fire. And I also plan on adapting Ralph Renee's book to video. Ralph Renee, he wrote the book NASA Mooned America. He passed away last year, very sadly. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I plan on adapting his book to video. He, he had the, probably the most compelling book about the, um, the, the moon hoax. For every statement that he makes, he has a you know, valid footnote behind it to back it up. Okay. Yeah. I just should say for the audience, the Apollo 1 fire, a lot of people don't know about it. I had sort of forgotten about it. Um, the um, There was this horrendous fire. Three astronauts were killed on the launch pad. Mm-hmm. Um, and the family of the astronauts, or the families of at least one of the astronauts, um, are not happy. They don't think it's been properly investigated and they think it was deliberate. Is that? I mean, I saw a, a video clip where some of his family members are saying that. Is that is that correct? That's correct. Uh, the, the family member you're talking about is from is from the Grissoms. Grissom. Uh, okay. Scott yeah. Grissom is, is the son of um, Virgil Gus Grissom. He believes that the fire was was set intentionally. In fact, in 1999, he was granted access to his father's spacecraft, and he found evidence that a metal plate had been shoved behind the dashboard to deliberately trigger a spark. Okay. I mean, now, this is this is a shocking allegation. I mean, the families of of NASA astronauts, you'd expect they would stand by. The, the creed and the, you know, the, uh, f- for them to be questioning it is an incredibly important thing. I'm surprised it hasn't been talked about. But quite, quite often with these technical type missions, you'd find that if they did a coronial investigation of the of the fire, they would find safety faults within the vehicle because they were at great risk, these astronauts. You know, they basically signed up, you know, a possible death sentence with what they were doing. And I think that would be the counterclaim was that they didn't want any investigation because it would uncover flaws in the mission. And also explain, would probably bring uh, technologies to light that were yeah. that were secret. So I mean, there's yeah. probably a, there's probably an explanation why they didn't, but it is definitely true that the families yeah. Yeah. never never received a proper investigation. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you ahead. something about that that fire. There's a whole lot of shady stuff behind it. Okay. Okay. Here's a taste of what you're in for for my next film. Yeah, okay. Sure. Now the guy who they who they who they elected to NASA, the guy who they elected to lead the investigation was um, Frank Borman, who would later fly on Apollo 8, their first mission around the moon. Now this guy, he was a an assistant professor in thermodynamics. Okay, he was the he's the guy who knows about energy transfer, all this sort of stuff. And I'm sure you, some of you might know that in um, thermodynamics classes, they actually have a, a bomb calorimeter in which they put a sample inside an oxygen chamber and they you know ignite it. Okay, so here this the Apollo capsule was very similar to that, in which they had all these astronauts inside this 
caps, you'll seal with 16 or 20 psi, depending on who you ask. PSI pure oxygen, 20 PSI pure oxygen, okay? Yeah, which now is substantially above um, the, the standard temperature, uh, standard pressure of 14.7. So, yeah, pressurised oxygen, oxygen environment, perfect for fire. You there? Propaganda. Disinformation. Misinformation. Deception. Deceit, spin, untruths, half truths, lies. You know the truth. Looking for something different? Visit Truth News Radio Australia. www.truthnews.com. Okay, uh, we're just back from a little technical glitch there. Uh, are you there, Jarrah? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, excellent. You read me. Excellent. Thank you. We read you absolutely better than, probably better than uh, Buzz Aldrin could uh, at this point. So we're um, just talking about the atmosphere inside yeah. the uh, the fire zone. Uh, it was yeah. a pressurized, oxygen-rich oxygen environment. So carry on. Yeah, well, basically, depending on who you ask, the pressure inside that was either 16 psi or 20 psi. Frank Borman, he claims it was 20 psi. But anyways... This guy, he, has, he was a, an assistant professor in thermodynamics, right? He clearly knows that this is going to be a hazardous test, right? Because he's done all these, you know, uh, bomb carometer experiments, right? And he testifies before Congress, and he says, I don't believe that any of us recognized that the test was going to be hazardous. We didn't, we wasn't classified as hazardous, basically, right? Yet in the same testimony, he then states that, oh, we are very aware of the fires at Johnsville Navy Air Station and also at Brooks Air Force Base. See, before the Apollo 1 fire, NASA and the U.S. government, they had all these uh, pure oxygen experiments, right? And each one of them turned into a disaster. Like, one of them, this guy was um, fixing a light bulb, right? And it, it burst into flames and created this, a flash fire. They, they tried to extinguish, extinguish it with an asbestos fire blanket. And guess what? The fire blanket caught on fire. Well, that's everything changes. It's, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's thermal rating when it's in an oxygen environment. I deal with oxygen at work all the time. Um, normally, yeah. you've got 21% oxygen in air. And uh, if, you're, if you're at 20 psi, which is a considerable amount above standard pressure, um, and it's all oxygen, I can imagine things would, uh, a lot of things would burn that people would, you know, wouldn't normally suspect would burn. Um, you know, basically, uh, most of the stuff inside that module would have been able to burn with that much oxygen present. Yeah, exactly. And then, the, then there's also various other conflicting statements, okay, is that um, Frank Borman, he claims that no one at NASA was aware of the fire hazard, yet Buzz Aldrin, he wrote a book called um, Men from Earth, and in that book he states that, oh, we were aware of the risk, but we considered it acceptable because in space we could instantly depressurize the cabin. Now, hold on a second, you either knew it was hazardous or you didn't. Which is it? Okay. Oh yeah, well, I mean these these things are normal in these sorts of um, you know these guys were pushing you know boundaries and and they have to lie or you know they believe they have to lie about things to uh, to get the job done. So I mean I don't find that particularly um, unusual. Not with some yeah. of the things we've uncovered with um, what the government and the military will say to uh, do what it is they want to do. You know they'll they'll create whole false flag events to yeah. uh, get their agendas happening. And then of course there's also North American aviation. You see there were two. Uh, groups involved in the Apollo 1 thing. There was, first of all, there was NASA who was trying to launch this thing, and then there was um, North American Aviation who actually built the spacecraft, you see. Now, what North American Aviation, what they were claiming now is that, oh, we thought NASA was doing this test at only 5 psi, not 20 psi, right? Yet in 1964, remember the fire was in 1967, right? In 1964, a, um, one of their engineers, Frank Hendel, he submitted an article in the Journal of Spacecraft and Rockets. The article is called Gaseous Environment During Space Missions. It's published in the July-August 1964 issue. Okay? In, that, in that article, he specifically states that oxygen presents a fire hazard, which is especially great on the launching pad with the cabin, when the cabin is purged with oxygen at 14.7 psi. Standard, okay. t- standard so this pressure. Guy, yeah. This guy at North American Aviation, he clearly knew that NASA does these tests at sea level pressure in pure oxygen, yet now they're claiming that they thought NASA was doing the test at only 5 psi. Yeah. Mm. They're, covering their, they're covering their asses, it seems. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it's, quite, it's quite interesting. It'd be good to uh, get these so, sorts of things into some sort of inquiry. So uh, what, which, which uh, like launch was this? 
Uh, this was Apollo 1, you see. Before, this, this was, was going to be an Earth orbit flight, the first manned flight of the Apollo spacecraft. They had uh, Virgil, Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee. Uh, Virgil Grissom, he was the first American to return to space. He was the first American astronaut to return to space. He had flown uh, Liberty Bell 7 and also Gemini 3. Edward White was the first American spacewalker. He flew Gemini 4. And um, Roger Chaffee, Apollo 1, was to be his first space flight. Wow. Well, you certainly know your stuff, Jarrah, and I, I think it's one of you know it's a very important thing that you're doing, and I really I congratulate you uh, on the work that you've uh, that you've done and all your videos and all your hard work, and I think the pursuit of truth is uh, a very virtuous one, and I, I really uh, you know it, it's fantastic to see such good yeah. work. Look, yeah, we're going to have to wind it up here. Um, can, you, can we just get like a quick um, roundup for you of your websites? Um, just so uh, people can follow that. Okay, sure. You can go on to um, moonmovie.com and uh, moonhoax.us. Those are the websites I'm contributing editor to. Okay. You can also go onto YouTube and do a search on White Jarrah. You'll find my account. My account is White Jarrah. It used to be Jarrah White, but after it got suspended the first time, I had to change it to White Jarrah. You can Great. find all my Moonfaker videos on there. You can go onto live video, live video slash Jarrah. You'll find, you find all my... Uh, um, flag in the gems videos there. Great. I also recommend the BillCasing.com website. That's the website made in honor of Bill Casing, the okay. grandfather of the Apollo hoax theory. Excellent. Um, and look, we'll put all those on the show notes. And uh, there's a uh, couple of good um, debunking sites too that are, that are fair. Yeah. Um, that I'll give you some links to that I got from um, some people in the US that have looked into this. Some um, okay, we'll put those on the show notes as well. Yeah. They're uh, they're, ske- they're skeptics of the hoax, um, but they they do say there are some interesting anomalies. Great. Yeah, no, on, honestly, uh, I think it's fantastic work and we always, to, to, to keep in a free society, you ought, must always distrust what, uh, what governments tell you and uh, you must always study for yourself and uh, don't believe uh, one source. Really, uh, go, go folks out there and, and, um, and you know, f- figure it out for yourself. Once again, please visit truthnews.com.au, folks. Um, uh, and tell your friends. Yeah, and uh, and please, um, anyone who wants to uh, uh, argue this point about the moon landings, we welcome the questions. Um, get in touch with Jared directly, or uh, leave notes on our site. And Jared, thanks so much for coming on. It was excellent. I hope we can talk to you again sometime. I hope so too. The pleasure, pleasure was all mine. Maybe we'll get an interview after I release my Apollo One video. I'd like to talk more on that. Okay, we'll do it. We'll have you back on when you've done that. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thanks a lot and good night, uh, Jarrah. Thanks a lot. Cheers.